They're beautiful. <sighs> they smell good too. You're still mad? Yeah, a little bit. She's hella mad, guys. <laughs> we went to go grab these real quick. My boy Jose, he works over at Phenom. He was just like, hey, we got these in small sizes too. Like hinting, being like, hey, and I was like, that's nice. <laughs> so, uh, treat your lady right, guys. She's hella mad right now. I wish you guys could see her face. We are going to set up a second camera. We just got to do stuff, so just be patient. What's good, guys? This is Nightwing2303 from WearTesters.com. Today, we got a quick, detailed look and review of these guys right here. This is the newest model within the Nike Hirachi line, and it's called the Hirachi Edge TXT. And on the label right there, it says HA, or HA, but it's for Hyper Adapt. So we're gonna just ignore that part. And this video is brought to you guys by the good folks over at squarespace.com. If you are interested in starting up your own website, owning a domain, a web store, or anything of that nature, head over to squarespace.com slash wear testers where you'll get 10% off your purchase and start your own online, hopefully, business today. Now, as far as these guys are concerned, again, this is the newest model or the newest kind of like, I wouldn't call it a runner, but like running inspired shoe by Nike within the Hirachi line. And I think that these this particular colorway the other ones look really cool too they're the white with the orange and the green almost a play on the original Hirachi run colorway that was white orange no or white, yellow orange, and white green. orange or uh, why do I keep saying orange why is it, I just said it like twice in a row yellow white green and yellow whereas this colorway right here is much like it says on the box there with the ha it's after the hyper adapt the original colorway of that shoe that's what these little teal hits are which I think are Freaking cool. I was gonna buy the other colorway. I thought that they were cool until they brought out these ones and I was like, oh, never mind. Nightwing blue for the win. Yeah. Now tech specs on these is the thing that I'm mostly interested in and I, I cannot honestly tell you what they are, which sucks. I can't find any information on them. The sneakers app description of the shoe just says lightweight foam midsole. So that leads me to believe that it's just foam, but I don't want to believe that because that would be weird. Like the Hirachi is one of the most comfortable sneakers in Nike's history and they feature air cushioning. So why wouldn't these? I don't know. Well, I know why they're trying to save some money while earning some, but still, they should have air in it. They don't have air in the name, so I'm pretty sure that they don't have air, but I'm not gonna like say with 100% certainty. And then normally what I would do is take out the insole, and that's when I could like see the impression of the air unit, whether it's Zoom or whether it's like a Air Max. And I can't do that because the insole on these guys is stitched in there. It sucks. They are comfortable though, and it's because of the lightweight midsole. It is file on, but they have it cored out, and then there's some flex screws in there as well. So you do get some bounce or some compression. They're not anywhere near as comfortable as the original Hirachi in my opinion. Again, that's one of the most comfortable sneakers of all time from Nike. But I do think with more wear, they will break in and feel better over time. The outsole is solid rubber. You can see it sectioned off in four different parts. I love what they're doing with the outsole itself where they're highlighting a specific color that's on the upper of the shoe with one of the translucent sections. I think that's awesome. The material build is similar to the original Hirachi, whereas those were kind of like a neoprene one piece booty. These guys are, they feel kind of similar, but it's way thinner. It's not neoprene or anything like that, but it is based off of compression. The forefoot area is just a textile mesh. I love the way that it looks though. I like the extra overlays, the stitching on top of it. I think it looks dope. And then I love the overlay materials along the shoe as well. It's a very nice leather, although it's very thin, but it's super soft, looks great, feels great. I just think that these are dope. This is a slick looking sneaker. I love, I love that little overlay right there at the toe. I think that those kinds of things, those little hits right there are slick. Got the Hirachi logo right there on the toe. They have laces, but you don't really need them. Basically a slip on. And then these little pods right there at the heel, the little rubbers, they're just like little uh, heel cages and everything. And I just really like the way that they look. I, I think that they're so cool. As far as fit is concerned, I went down half a size, which is weird because the original Hirachi, I had to go up half a size. So these guys try them on if store, if possible, they release on the 29th or 30th? Thursday, yes, for $110. For how much? 110. How much? 110. $110, folks. That's a good deal. Unless there's no air, then that kind of sucks. They still look cool though. Hmm? I like them because they're like my cities. Well, those have air in them. No, but I'm saying the silhouette because like I said, the original Hirachi, I don't like how it shoves my foot forward. Oh yeah, these do not do that. Like like we were saying earlier, they're, they run a half size big, which is weird, super weird because the original Hirachi is very tight. The way that those are constructed, I don't know if these guys are the same, but the way that those are constructed, the original Hirachi, this is like a random ass fun fact, but the US government considers that shoe to 
to be a sandal. So Nike actually saves a ton of money on imports, like import fees, even though it's an actual sneaker and a performance sneaker at that, or at least it used to be. Now it's more of a lifestyle thing. Like I was told a long time ago, I can't remember what it is, but I can't remember the reason for it, but I'm, I'm assuming it's because of the materials, like there's not enough of maybe like leather and stuff like that, but it is considered a sandal, which is super weird. I think it's kind of one of those things too, where if you took away all the fabric pieces and you just left the couple of leather pieces on there, it would be a sandal. Have they done that? <laughs> I don't know, I but I'm they, just saying if you picture it. No, I think they did make a Hirachi sandal. Why would anybody want to wear that? Along with the shoes, they actually come with this little pin, which is pretty cool. I don't know if both colorways do though, but this guy says, have you hugged your foot today? And that is a play on the colorway featuring that kind of like hyper adapt look. Like we were saying earlier, these are available right now. So if you're interested, go online. You can also check out Phenom, which is where we got ours. If you're in the Elk Grove, Sacramento area, you can give them a call if you can't find them as well. They're technically quick strikes. So I don't know like how abundant they're going to be but if you're interested you can give them a call I'll leave their number down below in the description box also a big thank you to squarespace.com for sponsoring this video again if you're interested in creating your own web page make sure that you hit the link in the description box squarespace.com slash wear testers you'll save 10 percent on the order i highly recommend it as somebody myself that has his own website and it's my business and I've built it like that over the past like nine something years. How long have we had it for? Nine years? Yeah. I highly recommend starting something like that, especially if you're young. This is not just a plug to like plug the sponsor or whatever. It's something that I wholeheartedly believe in. There's a lot of ways for people to become their own businessman. You know what I mean? Like to, to have your own business, to have your own something. And websites are one of the best ways to do it. And on top of that, you get to like share your voice, your opinion, passion, all that kind of good stuff, whether it's sneakers, whether it's comedy, comic books, whether it's food, it doesn't really matter. Just go ahead and try it out yourself. I highly recommend it, man. It's just, I can't say enough good things about creating your own website. So click the link down below and take initiative, man. Just do it, especially if you're young. Start right now. Like you, you will thank yourself later. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. And until next time, guys, have a good one. The funny thing with the Back to the Future shoe, the Air Mag, right? Or it's not the Air Mag, it's just the Nike Mag. So there's no air in it. But the, the funny thing about that shoe is that they made a couple of prototypes for the movie. And the, the gist was that that was when he went into the future. Right. Right? And he had the hoverboard and all that stuff. And so when he put his foot in there and it auto-laced, that wasn't CGI like it would be today. Mm -hmm. It was actually somebody underneath him pulling the shoestrings down. It was so funny, dude. Like it's such a it's such a cool thing. So the fact though is is that Tinker has wanted since then to actually do real auto lacing. Something that he and Tiffany Beers have been working on. Tiffany Beers is no longer with Nike. She actually has her own channel. This is not an intended plug. Go check her out though. We highly recommend it. If you are into sneakers, like for real into sneakers, you're not some like person that's just after hype beast shoes and stuff like that, which if that's you, no offense or anything. Um, if you're really into sneakers though, like you're really passionate and you want to know more than just what the shoe is, you know what I'm saying? Go check out her channel. It's, she's smart man like she, you got to go check her out she's a genius but her and tinker together worked on this which is ended up being what they call earl but they call it also the model name is hyper adapt and that's the the first laceless shoe then they did a auction for the mag and it was like a a one-to-one -one, like recreation or replica but like officially licensed by nike and that shoe did not have auto lacing system but it had all the lights and all that stuff and it came in like a crazy like yellow like caution like you know what I mean? Like box, like dock and stuff like that. And then they auctioned all of those off so they were super rare. But then like, I think it was like two or three years later, they came back out with the shoe again in limited numbers for auction. And all the auction money goes to Michael J. Fox's foundation for, what does he have, Parkinson's? So like all the money goes towards that, which is really cool. The second version of the shoe that came out a couple years later was the first thing to have auto lacing on it. Okay. And so they were able to finally like figure it out. And so when you stuck your foot in, you would hold the little collar and it would go and like zip the little laces down very slowly, not like in the movie but still it was, it was cool anyways. Then they came out with Earl or, or the Hyper Adapt and that's the first one where when you put your foot in there, your heel rests on the back of the shoe and then it somehow senses everything and like adapts to your foot shape and doesn't make it too tight. It just kind of makes everything like just right for you. I don't know, it's super cool. Like the functionality of it for performance isn't there. The thing that sucks is that that shoe, the Hyper Adapt retails for like $700, which sucks. So like if you have the money to spend then that's great. The part that sucks about that besides just the price alone 
alone is that the, the tech, like their original intention is to help people that cannot tie their shoes. And I'm not talking about people that just don't know how no, to tie. I get it. Like people that physically are unable to, people with Parkinson's or with, uh, I, there's other diseases that are like, I'm slipping right now, but like, you know what I mean? Like, and so it's for those types of people, like the fly e stuff with the zippers. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be like that, but even easier so that they can literally just put their feet in and it just does it. They don't have to touch anything. They don't have to zip anything, nothing. It's like super simple. The, the problem is, is that there's no way that people like that can afford a $700 shoe. And so that's the thing that's a bummer. So I'm hoping that the tech continues to like evolve quickly. That way it will actually help people out. Because as of right now, it's just a novelty uh, instead of like an actual useful tool. But it's still dope that they came up with it. Don't ask me about stuff. <laughs>